All right, for those of you who've been waiting, the final stretch here, Michael Jackson documentary. It's not really a Michael Jackson documentary. It's Leaving Netherland, Neverland. It's more about um, these two men, Wade Rob Robson and James Safechuck. And they said they lied for years every time they were asked if they had been molested by Michael Jackson. And they're now coming out and saying they lied. And in fact, they were molested according to them. And this is a big mess right now. Uh, and if you have not followed it in the media, I don't know where you've been because everybody is talking about this leaving Netherland. It was a two part documentary put on by HBO. I think it was two hours each part. So about four hours long. It's unbelievable. I, I could turn it into an eight hour analysis. And tonight I'm gonna talk just about one of the people the American, James Safechuck, uh, Wade Robson. I'll talk about him either next week or I'll do a special video talking about him. There's just too much to cover. So let's go into James Safechuck. Uh, around nine or 10 years old, he said uh, Michael Jackson, he's claiming Michael Jackson started molesting him. And right now, uh, James is in his 30s, I, I think. And he de denied being molested uh, to his mother and to a grand jury. Uh, and his father, who is still alive, is not in this documentary. His mother is, so we'll be talking about her. And how James Safechuck got involved with Michael Jackson and met him was in the 19... Let me, can I make my screen bigger here? I don't know if you guys can see me. Is in 1986, and I remember this commercial, it was a Pepsi commercial, and he was later also on stage in the Bad Tour. So I don't know if you remember this Pepsi commercial. I remember seeing this when I was younger, and this little boy walks in, and he's looking for Michael Jackson and looking at all the paraphernalia, and well, I don't know if the paraphernalia is the right word, but looking at all the Michael Jackson stuff, and uh, and he looks at Michael Jackson's coat and all this stuff and in comes Michael Jackson and they smile at each other. In the documentary, they talk about how that was the first moment uh, James Safechuck actually met Michael Jackson. So the legit smile that he shows when he meets him was the real smile. He had not met Michael before that. And then talks about the documentary about how things escalate pretty quickly, pretty quickly. Um, the parents, James Safechuck's parents, mother and father used to smuggle Jackson out of his million dollar mansion and take him over to their house just to hang out. And the mother says, I felt like Michael was just another son of mine. His parents and the mother admits to knowing that their son was in fact sleeping in bed with a grown man, Michael Jackson. Um, some of this footage is really disturbing. If you're watching this and your kids are up or if you're watching this after I've recorded it live during the day at work, um, this is probably the part you want to pause and watch later in private, not in front of people. Some of the stories are incredibly graphic and what you're going to hear is going to make many people uncomfortable. So this would be a good time to pause if you do not have some privacy. Uh, he said around the age of 10, Michael Jackson taught him how to masturbate and that's where everything began. He also said, um, James Safechuck said, Michael Jackson said to him, according to James Safechuck, uh, that, that he taught, James taught Michael Jackson how to French kiss. And it talks about, and I'm gonna pull some clips here about nipple tweaking and um, some really tough stuff. Um, supposedly Michael Jackson, according to James Safechuck, would say numerous times our lives would be over if anyone found out this is how we express our love. And James Safechuck is the person in the story. It's hard sometimes to follow the two different people. The stories are so incredibly similar, but James Safechuck is the one that supposedly he said him and Michael got married in a ceremony and allegedly said that he went into the jewelry store to get this particular ring. He shows us the ring in the documentary and his arms are, his hands are, sh are shaking as he holds it very subtly. And uh, evidently, according to James Safechuck, they told the jeweler, oh, I'm buying this ring for a very small woman. So I'm going to have this little boy try on the ring and he tries it on and they get it to his size, allegedly. Uh, and in the fourth hour of this documentary, it's really revealing with James Safechuck, forehead, lip biting, cringing, um, a lot of neck scratching. So let's dive in. He would run drills with me where he'd be in the hotel room and he would pretend like somebody was coming in and he had to get dressed as fast as possible without making noise. So not getting caught was a big, like just kind of 
fundamental. It was very much a secret. And he would tell me that if anybody found out, his life would be over and my life would be over. And that's something he tells you over and over again. Uh, all right, so I want to start before I show you what I saw here. Uh, if you if you're new to who I am, my name is Jeanine Driver. I came in with a bias to this documentary, and I'm going to tell you my bias was I think these guys are lying. I think they're just about the money, even before I even saw it. And so step one for me is always calling myself out on my bias. And the reason I thought they were lying is so they had this lawsuit. And the statute of limitations ran out and they're, they're getting an appeal for that. And these two men and uh, I'm like, oh, they just want the money. And I had once I was on Larry King Live and in the green room, I was doing it remote from Washington, D.C. I think Larry King was either in Atlanta or in New York, but he, I know he wasn't in D.C. And I was interviewed in D.C. And I was in the green room with um, one of the attorneys for Michael Jackson connected to one of these molestation charges, not these two guys, a different one. And uh, I had talked to him at length for about 40 minutes and he shared some information with me about Michael Jackson. Like for instance, outside Michael Jackson's room, supposedly according to this lawyer, um, he had motion detectors. And so he could, he could prove based on the alarm system if someone walked outside of his room and supposedly one of the mothers set up there, sent two kids into the house and she later confessed that she lied. And um, one of the siblings said, oh, no, I came up and saw Michael Jackson doing this to my sibling, my brother. And but they had proof that there was no alarm that was triggered outside. There was no movement outside of Michael Jackson's room. And so I just remember hearing that. So coming into this, I had a bias thinking these guys are all about money. And here's the deal. It can be about money and it could still be real. Both things can be a reality. They can want money for what happened and how their families were destroyed. And what they're saying can be real. And they could have lied before. And now they're telling the truth because of different reasons, maybe for money, maybe because they became fathers and they looked at their kids um, and, and just something happened because both of them fall apart, both these people. So um, both Wade Robson and, and James uh, Safechuck, who we're looking at tonight. So did you see what I saw in this clip? I just did drills with me where... Watch He'd be in again. the hotel room and he would pretend like somebody was coming in and you had to get dressed as fast as possible without making noise. So not getting caught was Watch a big point, just kind of fundamental. You see that lip thing? This lip biting? So this lip biting, and this is a great screenshot for you, this lip biting connects with concern negative thoughts and bad events happening. So if you're talking to your kids or your significant other or your boss or an employee, or you're talking to your kids' teachers, or you're talking to in sales, a client or a potential client or a vendor, and they bite their lip here after you say something or you ask them a question. This body language move connects with concern, negative thoughts, bad events happened. This move is congruent with someone that's telling the truth. And so when I began watching the documentary, my expertise, I was blindsided. It is not what I expected because I came in with this bias. Now I have another bias. I, I was molested as a young kid uh, around the age of six. I don't know the exact age, but around the age of six by a neighbor. And so I have like these two competing biases. This one where I met this Michael Jackson attorney in a green room at CNN in Washington, DC. And he told me some inside data. And then the fact that I was molested as a kid. And when I told my mother, I remember... I didn't tell her the whole thing. Like I told her 90% of what happened. Not even, I told like 80% of what happened. And I know that I lied and I don't know why I lied, maybe out of embarrassment. I feel like sometimes we test the waters and we'll tell someone a little bit of the truth and see how they respond. And uh, when my mom passed away, I remember thinking, mom, now you know the whole story. Now you know everything that happened that day with this neighbor. Uh, so when I dive into this documentary, I was like, Oh, this guy, uh, James Safechuck, he's telling the truth. And uh, I could be wrong. 
It's just my experience. There are no tells here that I saw or heard that connect with someone who's being deceptive. As a matter of fact, if you can air, can, if you compare um, James Safechuck to someone like Jesse Smollett, who had this memorized speech and he just started talking really fast and this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened. You can feel the difference here um, with this dramatic pausing as he's gathering his thoughts and memories. This is indicative of someone talking about something that legitimately happened in the past. You're looking for pausing like this with a truthful story. The problem usually is when someone's talking about a lie from the past is they have the script ready and they just start talking like they remember all the details and they talk uh, very fast. So this is congruent of someone that is telling the truth. And again, next week or in the next couple of days, I'll, I'll chat with you about Wade Robson and if I think he's telling the truth or holding something back and being deceptive. So for today, uh, this is, this is look at this right here. Concern, so negative thoughts, bad events happen. I just got a fundamental. So not getting caught was a big, I just got a fundamental. You see a little smile though. So not getting caught was a big, I just got a Mental. Right here. All right. So we see the smile. Uh, everyone, if you're here at, at watching on the back end, what I'd like you to do is say he, H E E, like he, he, he. I want to connect he, he, he with um, happiness and embarrassment and evil or nervousness. It could be in there with embarrassment. So H E E, happiness, E embarrassment or nervousness or you know uncertainty so you could smile there and then duping delight which is evil which is i'll show you i'll get you um anytime you see a smile at an inappropriate place like this i always say ask yourself is it possible this is embarrassment and if the answer is yes then I don't use the smile as a tell for deception. Uh, if there's no reason why someone should be embarrassed, you're talking about, I never killed somebody. I never killed Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy's like, he, he's looking down in the big famous interview he did just before he was killed the day, the next day. And he's looking down and he's like, and I, you know what? I, I woke up one day and I realized I, I, I can't believe I did this. Well, would there be embarrassment that he killed someone? No, that's that evil that we see with duping delight with Ted Bundy. I should have thrown him in here another time. There was like kissing and I think just kind of rubbing on each other. And then, um, and then, um, oral sex, it's kind of rubbing, rubbing. Rubbing, rubbing, just kind of. Okay, before he says rubbing, do you see how his hands come together? Truthful people, the body language happens a beat before the word. So, watch if I said call me, I go like this call me. I don't go call me, call me. You don't go, you don't go check, please. You go check, please. The body language gesture comes first, check please. Call me, not call me. Uh, so we see this, I slowed it down and rewound it several times because the hand gesture comes to comes with the words. And we're also seeing this hand gesture is congruent. All his moves, these are called emblems or illustrators. An emblem has a common recognizable symbol, a signal, it means something like this is A-OK -okay in the United States, but you could do this in another country and it's offensive. Um, so they're territorial emblems. Illustrators help tell the story. This is an illustrator. At the end of the day, I've mentioned this before, it doesn't matter if it's an emblem or an illustrator. That's just people in my world that want to sound off fancy that they know lingos. Body language, let's just call body language is body language. Does this body language hand gesture match the story that he's telling or does it seem out of sync? This is congruent with the story that he's telling. As a matter of fact, when we get to it later and he talks about how Michael Jackson would have him get naked, according to him, uh, that um, he'd get on all fours. And when he says that Michael Jackson would masturbate behind him, he, you see him lift up his bum. When he said Michael Jackson liked to look at the bum, you see his bum literally lift off. So hopefully I pulled that clip as well. 
Um, let's just keep watching this. This body language, in my opinion, is congruent with someone who's telling the truth. Now, maybe the, he's just a really awesome actor. Maybe that's the case because right now we don't know for sure. There's no verdict on if he's telling the truth or lying. My experience is this type of behavior is indicative of someone telling the truth. So, being on each other, and then um, oral sex. And then he Do you see how he's pausing here? And, and sometimes he's uncertain when he'll say, but like, I think um, I, someone who's lying, they'll work out all the details. I was 10 years old. He did rub against me. Um, also, someone who's lying would say, I didn't like, keep in mind, there's a lawsuit that they're trying to get, you know, opened back up in the courts. So if you're going to try to get a lawsuit with a bunch of money, wouldn't you agree that it might be a good idea to say this caused me pain and I hated it every night I cried myself to bed. The last thing I think we would say is, I mean, I never felt harmed by it. I never felt that anything was wrong. You know, I felt like we were in a relationship together. And so, you know, we're hearing this language that's coming up soon that that a liar typically who's in a lawsuit is gonna say the opposite. They're gonna say this was pain and suffering and I was terrified of Michael Jackson. You know what's here? Love, love and then later confusion. Want me to suck on his nipples and then he would finish himself. He also had a, like an Indian fort with teepees. And so <laughs> we would lay down uh, sleeping bags have snacks and then have sexual relations there. There was also a game room and then upstairs in the arcade, there was a, another room and I had a bed in there. We would go into that room and have sex there. All right. At the train station, there's a room upstairs and we would have sex up there too. It happened every day. It sounds sick, but it's kind of like when you're first dating somebody, right? You do a lot of it. So it was very much like that. All right, look at this. Kind of like. We see that smile again. Like, this is indicative of people who are uh, any type of um, child abuse survivors, especially when it's related to sexual. Uh, I was once called in and court TV for a woman who was molested, according to her, by her dad from, I think, the age of five to 19. And she killed both her father, her and her brother killed the father and the mother and buried them, one in the basement under cement and one in the under the rose bushes in their yard. And when she was in court, <clears throat> the court TV, uh, which was a CNN channel, called me in to basically call her a liar because while on the stand she talked about getting raped by her father at a young age i think she was like six or eight and the father had a loaded gun in her mouth he was drunk and as she's telling the story she does what we see james safe chuck do here is she was giggling and laughing a little bit and ask yourself would that be connected to embarrassment yeah like so think about james safe chuck here is going on television what happened to the woman on court TV? She was in front of a judge and jury and all the cameras were there. Um, she had only told the story in a letter to her girlfriend had never said it out loud. And so we saw this giggling and, and the producers wanted me to say, oh yeah, she's lying. That's why she's laughing. Um, so embarrassment, nervousness, we'll often see this kind of inappropriate smile. It's just connected with really shame, right? Every day. It sounds sick, but it's kind of like when you're first dating somebody, right? You do a lot of it. So it was very much like that. See that long blink and then that sadness over his face as he looks off. It's not trying to convince us of anything. Truthful people convey, liars try to convince. Ooh. And I remember my penis swelling up because I did it so much that first time. I, think I must, have done, must have done it a few times. And so I remember dipping my penis in warm water, Michael filled the cup up with the water so I could pee, it was hard to pee. I don't have any unpleasant memories other than not being able to pee. It felt like you were bonding in a way. 
the tour was the start of this sexual like couple relationship i want you to notice his eye squinting there did you notice that i want to i want to talk about this Chip. let me back it up a little well like couple relationship See that little squint? let's talk about that so look at this from the left to the right. This is where that squint happens. We also see some disgust in his upper lip pulling up as he's talking about this relationship, right? And the squinting of the eyes is something is wrong, concern, doubt, concentrating, um, trying to make sense of something or insecure. So take a screenshot of this one or grab your cell phone and take a picture. If you Think about if you're threading a needle, right? I've talked about this before because sometimes we'll stick our tongue out too when we thread the needle like this, but you'll squint at your eyes. This is, you know, concentrating. I'm concentrating on getting that, that thread to the needle. You don't have your eyes open wide. You squint like this concentration. When you're trying to think of something, you will often squint. Now, what year was that? When was that? Your eyes will tend to squint concentration. You're trying to make sense of something that what, what happened? Um, or insecure, like, no, I would love to come and help you. Um, and you're really nervous about it. So this move right here is not a move that you see liars make intentionally. This is very rare that you could even catch this on camera in a situation with this amount of heat. So um, the fact that we see it here is often linked to someone who's telling the truth. Again, we don't know for sure if he's telling the truth. It's just indicative this particular uh, gesture, this micro expression on the face, we do see on truthful people. My son for Michael would would scratch each other here on the palms of you're holding your hand there's that hand gesture going along with the story again so we see this illustrator as he's telling the story i meant like you were thinking of them sexually there's no fault so this is wrong. so now maybe you've heard maybe you've heard this it meant that you're thinking of them sexually um we'll also hear james safe chuck say things like <clears throat> you you do this, you do that. Um, this is distancing language. And so some liars do use this language for sure, or the word choices happen. We also see a change in this language going from you or we um, to create a little distance when it's uh, a very emotional topic. Uh, the reason I'm not concerned about the use when we hear it or this language is because uh, James Safechuck uses lots of eyes. Michael said this to me, I did this, I did that. So we have the eyes and the me's, we have that ownership. And those moments where he says you, those would indicate to me, wow, this is something that perhaps gives an increase in stress and anxiety for him. <laughs> Just very accepted way of expressing your love. That's what he would say your love and that long eye block that's what he would say uh, according to james safe check my son for michael would would scratch each other here on the palms of you're holding your hand um, okay he's demonstrating too holding your hand again very this is the opposite of what when we when we decoded the behavior of jesse smollett he wasn't doing any of this gestures if you if you would bend over you, and you like spread open your cheeks right. that's what he liked if you watch, watch if you would bend over <laughs> and like spread open your cheeks that's what he liked i know this is really weird and personal so this is why i said this is pretty graphic stuff um, I want you to notice that as he's talking he he literally lifts up his bottom while telling the story if you if you would bend over oh, hold on back it up Wow, we're almost done. Everyone, thanks for hanging in there. If you, if you would bend over what? and like spread open your cheeks, that's what he yeah, likes. His leg lifted. And he would masturbate. <laughs> he liked um, if I rubbed his nipples. So we would do stuff, and then in the end, when he wanted to ejaculate he would he would finish himself five minutes left thanks for hanging in there if you didn't think 
Now, this is Jane Safechuck's mother. By the way, uh, let her son sleep in the bed with Michael Jackson, grown man, her young son, um, knew it was happening, uh, would, would would travel from one hotel to another. First, their, her hotel room and her husband's would be close to Michael Jackson, where her son, her little kid, was sleeping with Michael Jackson in the bed. And then each trip, it was getting further and further away. Um, I heard Dr. Drew speak recently on a show where he said, you know, I think the onus really comes down to the mothers in this documentary. And um, this particular clip, uh, I, this really is disturbing. As a mother myself of sons, three sons, um, this clip hurts my soul. Didn't think anything. Didn't think anything. So she says, didn't, didn't think, think, think anything. anything. This is a deviation from her baseline where she normally is pretty gregarious didn't and talking smoothly. Anything. She has this choppy language. She says she didn't, didn't think, think anything. anything. She doesn't say I drops the pronoun, which is indicative of someone didn't that's lying. Think anything. And then she nods her head. Yes. Didn't think anything. Uh, you know, it could be many reasons we're seeing this. Uh, Potentially one reason is she did in fact think something was going on and then don't overrode her instinct. Um, but it could be something else that's making that happen. Uh, for me, this was a tough one because uh, it's a potential, doesn't mean 100%, but there's a potential that she did think something was going on and still allow that to happen uh, for many, 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 many years. And we're gonna see one more clip. I wanted to know what was what's going on in the room. <laughs> My son doesn't know this, <laughs> but all right. Now I don't know the director of this movie. I've watched lots of footage about you know how it all came about, and I'm assuming it's possible that the director, when making this movie, had people go back to each part of like where were you at this time, like before you knew your son was getting. Uh, potentially molested, you know, uh, you know, what were you thinking at that moment, trying to bring them back in time. So then we get the heavy hitting at the last, you know, fourth hour of this documentary, all the big tears and the, you know, everything kind of comes together. Uh, and with that being said, if that is the case, so the mother here, uh, James Safechuck's mother, maybe she's thinking back to before she knew um, what her son had told her because her son alleges that Michael Jackson did this stuff. We don't know for sure if it happened. It's allegedly. Uh, and how do you, you can't unhear something. You can't unlearn something. You can't unhear it. And I don't care how you're directing me. If something, God forbid, happened to one of my kids and I'm telling the story and my son is now grown up and he, his marriage, He's been struggling and, and suffering with depression and, and with work and really trying to figure this all out. Um, how do you unexperience what you know? How do you unexperience? And so the mother's going back in time talking about how she used to eavesdrop outside of Michael Jackson's room and that she would, and she's laughing gregariously. And my son doesn't know this. He doesn't know this, but I used to eavesdrop outside the room. Really? Because you're a human being right now that knows that when you weren't eavesdropping or even when you were, that potentially bad stuff was happening to your little son. How do you unhear that and unknow that information? There's way too much excitement here. This piece of the video right here was one of my top three hardest moments to watch. It literally made me sick to my stomach. I would, you know, wanted to know what was what's going on in the room. <laughs> My son doesn't know this. <laughs> but I would, you know, go to the door, try to listen, hear what conversation was going on, and then I'd sneak away. I wasn't worried that anything was going on. I guess it was more curious. What are they doing in there? Playing, reading. The problem is here. There's not even sadness. Even if she's trying to like suppress it, there's not even sadness in her in her, in her eyebrows like pulled together. Like, I guess I wasn't worried. Like this, there's, there's like nothing. There's not this joy, this happiness. This is like starstruck. 
Michael was reading, he bought him a lot of nice, good books, you know, and he poems. He'd read poems to him. He bought him books. Just yeah, he bought him books. books. He bought him jewelry, supposedly. And all of this is called grooming. If you're not familiar with grooming, it's called grooming. And I'll talk more about grooming in my next video when we when we talk about Wade Robinson at another time. I think, oh, no, I, I got to go back to here. All right, I think we have two more I slides. Wanted to know what Thanks was, for sticking what's in going there. On in the room. <laughs> my son doesn't know this. But I would, you know, go to the door, try to listen, hear what conversation was going on, and then I'd sneak away. I wasn't worried that anything was going on. I guess it was more curious. What are they doing in there? Playing, reading. Michael was reading. He bought him a lot of nice, good books, you know, and he poems. He'd read poems to him. Just kid things. They were just doing kid things. So it wouldn't actually like ejaculate. 